Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, our extraordinary pesetas, I said, Praise the Lord. I came here today to wake you up. There's a giant in you there. He wants to come out. And he's pushing everything aside. And he's saying, let me go ahead and you follow. That power inside you. That angel of an achiever inside you will come out today. Everything God has created you for. And he gave you the natural potential. And now we develop on that potential. Combining the two. And then I say, stand up. You are standing. I say, on your set. Mark, tell me. You'll go places. Why are you there? Raise up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I come today to wake up your children. The boys, the girls, the youths, the young adults, everyone. And I pray mighty power will come in every life today. In Jesus' name. The understanding we ought to have, the perception we ought to have, the divine energy we ought to have, and everything that will make us get to the peak of where you have called us. I pray you grant to everyone here, there, online, everywhere, all over the globe, in Jesus' name. Make us extraordinary peace setters. I will pray, Lord, as we move on, we will not be weak. We will not be tired. We will not fall by the side of the road. We pray, Lord, that you will do in everyone what needs be done so that we'll make it the way you have ordained everyone will make it in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As you know, we come here today not to tell you something ordinary, not to tell you what you have always known, not to tell you what you have already, but to get up and to move up and to move forward and then to get to a place you never thought you would get to. Your life is going to take on a new turn, a new power, a new light. Now, some people think when we say amen, that's the end of the meeting. So you're free to say amen. I'll go as long as I need to go to get you and to make you what the Lord has intended, a pacemaker, an extraordinary pacemaker. So when I say something that demands amen, you will give me a Niger stage, Nigerian and African and global amen. God bless you. God bless you. Now today, I want to talk to you on learning to live with a pace-setting mindset. Learning to live. You need to learn how to live. Learning to live with a pace-setting mindset. The mindset is very important. If I have the mind of a mediocre, mindset of a mediocre. If I have a mindset of a never do well, 
If I have a mindset of I've never gotten it, I never get it, and I will never get it, the mindset I have, the mindset you have, the disposition you have, the vision you have, that mindset, mindset is the groundwork, is the fundamental thing, is the important thing. So you need a mindset. How do you set your mind? Like you set your alarm clock. And you turn it this way and say, that's the time I want that alarm to ring. In your heart, there is a mind. And you need to set that mind. And set that mind on the peak, on the top of the mountain, on the extraordinary thing that the Lord has called you to do. Mindset. What kind of mindset? A pace setting mindset that I'll be in front of the queue. I'm going to make it to the top. I'm going to get to the peak, the peak of my life, the peak of my profession, the peak of my studies, be the peak of my choice in life. And now you learn to live that way. You learn to live with such a mindset. Learning to live with a peace setting mindset. Look at Isaiah chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7. For the Lord God will help me. Amen. Amen. Therefore, shall I not be confounded? I'll not be confused. I'll know where I'm going. I know my target. And I know the peak, and I know the pace with which I need to move on. I'll not be confused. I'll not be deserted. I'll not be confounded. And then he says, therefore, have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. When you set your mind, and you have that mindset of an achiever, the mindset of a peer setter, you know that you will not be ashamed. The Lord has made a path before you. I said the Lord has made a path before you. You will not be confused. Which way do I take? Which direction do I take? The Lord will be with you. How do I discover? What am I to do? How am I to achieve? And what profession will I take? The Lord will guide you. There will be no confusion in Jesus' name. What kind of mind then do we have to have? In Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 5. Let this mind be in you. That means you can hinder that kind of mind. And it's appealing to you. Get ready. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind in Christ Jesus. He knew this is the way to go. He knew that is the place to reach. He knew this is what I came for. For this purpose came I into the world and he fulfilled that purpose. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl has a purpose for which you have come to the world, just like Christ arch, and it says, Let the mind be in you. The mind search that says, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, I'm a man, I'm a woman, a purpose, a performance, and I'm going to reach the place he has ordained for me. Your mind said, let that mind be in you. And the Lord will accomplish that for which he has called you in Jesus' name. Learning to live with a peace-setting 
might search. Are you sure? I'm going to give you three points. Number one, number one is the power of a purpose-driven life. A purpose-driven life. It's not a person meandering. It's not a person that wakes up in the morning. He doesn't know what's he going to do. And where is he going to be? And what skill is he going to manifest? He has a purpose. And that is the purpose that drives him in life. Anything different from the purpose that should drive him he neglects, not only that, he restrains, not only that, he rejects, not only that, he just it, he jettises. He says, No, that's not going to align with my purpose. The man, the woman is a purpose-driven man, and the power that comes out of that purpose-driven life is unstoppable when you have that today you'll be unstoppable in jesus name number two in the pursuit of a peak seeking learner he knows the life he wants and he says i must learn what i learn is very important to lead me into the purpose-driven life I want to live, the pursuit of a peak-seeking learner. And then number three is partnership with our promise-keeping Lord. The partnership. Your goal is higher than you are. And your destiny is greater than who you are because of that you need a partner you need a helper you need a reformer you need a refiner you need somebody that will be partner with you and then you will get to the top of your calling in jesus name the partnership with our promise keeping lord one two three you'll be there yeah. number one number one is the power of a purpose driven life the power of a purpose driven life and i'm using joseph for this point in genesis chapter 41 Reading from verse 44, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And then verse 46, we're told, and Joseph was 30 years old, Plus or minus, that's who we are. 30 years old. And it says when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Went throughout, literally. It was known in all the land of Egypt. I cannot begin to tell you where you'll be known. Yeah. Where your name will get to. Yeah. Where your ability and your skill will get to. He was, he was in every part of Egypt. How? By the power of a purpose-driven life. I beg of you, do not take another step in life without having a purpose that drives you. Because without that purpose, you will amount to next to nothing. You will eat and drink, sleep and wake up, play and do other things. And when you ask yourself, where was I five years ago, ten years ago, and where am I today? 
it will be at the same level. But if you have a purpose and that purpose drives you, if you have a purpose and that purpose engineers you from within, if you have a purpose and that purpose is leading and guiding you to the place the purpose driven life will get to. When you look at your life five years ago and then today, there will be a big difference for the better for the higher in Jesus name three things I'm looking at here number one progress despite problems progress despite problems number two purpose driven purity and number three perseverance determining peak performance perseverance just stay at it just stick to it. Don't get your mind, your eyes off that thing just because there are problems, just because there are challenges, or just because there are difficulties. Stick to that thing. If you have that thing, we call stick ability. Stick ability stick ability and you stick to it and you keep on in perseverance. It's a matter of time. You will soon get there. I will soon get there. Look at number one. Progress despite problems. I'm sure you know the story already. The story of Joseph. He had progress despite problems. How do I recognize define the problems of Joseph. How do I bring out, itemize your problems? The problems, P, he had pressure. The pressure that will weigh a young man, a young woman down, and the load that is so heavy on his mind, P, he had problem, R, he had rejection rejection and that rejection could have meant am i deceiving myself am i dreaming of an impossibility and then he had oh opposition opposition every turn of the way the problem of the man i'm talking about the man that is purpose driven he had opposition and then he had Bleeding. That man was bleeding in the heart. They separated me from my father. That caused him bleeding. They separated me from my family. That caused him bleeding. He wouldn't have been able to think about any other thing. Only the bleeding. The bleeding that he went through. And then hell lies. 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 They told the big lie against this young man. He wasn't 30 at that time. He was just like a teenager at that time. And a big lie they told against him. And the lie was so strong enough that they sent him to the prison. But you know, he still succeeded. And I'm coming to tell you here today, whatever problems you've got, you will still succeed. And then he there elimination elimination they eliminated him from the family he belonged to they just sent him away and the father thought he had died elimination and then he got to Potiphar's house. He was being well, actually. And the Lord was with him. And the Lord prospered him and prospered, um, you know, he prospered the house of Potiphar. And then when the wife said what she said against Joseph, he was eliminated. Get out of here. You are no good. You are mouth to nothing. I didn't know you were dirty in the private. And then you were coming outside and see if you are an all, all right. And he didn't have any more to talk. He went to the prison. Elimination. Emma. He was mistreated. Misunderstood. Mistreated. Misjudged 
mistreatment. This man had problem. And then is a stumbling block. A great stumbling block. Here was his dream. And here was the stumbling block. And the stumbling block was between him and his dream as if he'll never make it. But he made it. And I will make it. Say it for yourself. I will make it. Joseph, help me. Tell me something. How did you, despite the problems, how did you make progress? He said, I made lemonade out of my lemon. I said, I don't understand. He said, lemonade is sweet and we drink that he said lemon is bitter all the things that the world threw at me bitter things terrible things problems of life i made i chewed that lemon i didn't throw it to anybody and then i refashioned it and i made lemonade out of my lemon and that will give you progress what did joseph do for him to have progress despite the problems he found pleasure in pressure pleasure in pressure he says this pressure has come to deliver me from a life of mediocrity, from a wishy-washy life. This problem of pressure has come to press out all the deficiencies of my life. And I take pleasure in pressure. In your life, when pressures come, great problem. Take pleasure in that. Befriend that pressure and say, this one will deliver me from mediocrity. This one will press out everything that is called deficiency out of my life. This one will, de will develop my muscle. This one will develop my ability to stay on the path that leads to progress. Make the pressure, your pleasure. And then we have our rejection. Rejection. And then he took that rejection and he says, I must be relevant. Relevant. Relevance means that they say, I will not. I'm going to be relevant. I will. They say, I cannot. I'm going to be relevant. I will. I can. They say, I should get out of the path of progress. They say, who needs you? Who needs your talent? Who needs your skill? Who needs your dream? Where he was rejected, eventually he became relevant. You'll be relevant. Amen. Oh, he took opposition opposition and he made that opposition is opportunity you see in life when you have opposition oppression difficulties and you're looking at that and you say i'm gone i'm done i used to have the energy pumping me up saying i will i must i can i used to say i'm going to get there but now with all the opposite there's no encouragement i have 11 brothers one was not available all the 10 of them they said here comes the dream let us kill him and see what will become of him and I got that opposition and I made a great opportunity out of it what can you make of the opposition you have think about it you must sit down and think you must not just not flow downstream or the river as it's flowing you must not take opposition as if finished it's all there's nothing i can do if you're going to make progress and i know i'm talking to progressive progressing people here today in jesus name 
online i can see you there jotting down making your notes because i know this opposition in your life in your family in your school in your college in your university in your place of work that opposition will not stop you you'll make an opportunity out of that in jesus name and then i have b the bleeding it turned the bleeding to a blessing and he got to the house of potiphar it was a blessing there he got to the prison it was a blessing there everywhere he went he was still bleeding how could my brothers do this how could they separate me jerk me out of my roots how they could they approach me like that he was still bleeding but everywhere he went he carried his cross with a smile and in spite of the bleeding he had blessing to give out to everybody and the blessing he gave out to everybody also brought blessing to him he was promoted every stage of the way i'm talking about you I said I'm talking about you. You know, some people, when they bleed on the inside, they keep on licking their wounds. They keep on remember, remembering the name of Reuben, of Simon, of Levi, of Issachar, all those people. And they keep on remembering the look on their face. They were cruel. And the more you think like that, the more you'll be bleeding. Shut up the bleeding and be a blessing to somebody near you there. And do good to somebody near you there. And instead of bleeding and bleeding, you will be a blessing. I'm looking for the one I'm talking about. I'm looking for her, for that her sister I'm talking about. Wipe out the tears. Wipe out the tears. They want to take your smile, your joy, your laughter away. Begin to laugh. Sometimes the laughter will be artificial. When you start, don't just give yourself a good laugh and say, the thought of position will clamp down on me and shut me up and just laugh that you are laughing until your ribs are almost breaking and then you say I'm looking around I want to be a blessing to somebody you'll be a blessing to somebody in Jesus name elimination he made elimination to become elevation elevation he said elimination no you are not going to eliminate me I am going to be elevated because of what they have done in your life that's how you turn problem to progress that's how you change all those negative things and they become positive in your life in jesus name l line the lie they told against him now made him a leader a leader he go from that position and uh, Potiphar said, foolish man, filthy man, unfaithful man. You wanted to do that to the most precious person to me on earth, all right? You will never climb the ladder of success again. And then he was in the prison. The lie made him a leader. I didn't hear your amen. Yeah. The lies Satan tells about you. The lies children of the devil tell about you will get you on the ladder. And you will climb all to be a leader in Jesus' name. Uh, what I'm telling you is Joseph did not allow the problem, the problems to hinder him or to stop him problems will not stop you lies will not stop you and then we have we have dealt with elimination already and then elevation misunderstanding mistreatment it turned that to become his motivation 
motivation. You know, in life, we need to be motivated. And something has to be in my heart, in your heart, that motivates me, that motivates you, that you come to live a meaningful life. That all the things that they miss interpreted and so mistreated you all those things everything you turn around and you're well motivated to have a life of meaningfulness your life will be meaningful s is the stumbling block the stumbling block that they put in front of him. He was like a runner. And he was running towards the goal and running towards the achievement like a runner. And then the brothers put a stumbling block. It's coming, it's running, let him stumble. He saw it and he took that stumbling block and that stumbling block became a stepping stone. A stepping stone. If you can look at your life and everything that was supposed to be a stumbling block, you turn that around and you're always positive and you know, I will get there. That peak, I will get there. That dream, I will get there. And that place, I will get there. That is what helps us helps everyone and that will help you to make progress in spite of your problem give me a good amen. amen number two number two we're looking at purpose driven purity purpose driven purity you know um joseph he remained pure why he had a purpose you see what tempts you is what you are looking at if you're looking at the face of the wife of potiphar that's where your direction your intention will go if you're looking at the throne and you're looking at the siege beside pharaoh and you say as a dreamer, the Lord has told me that that is my place. That's what you'll be looking at. And you cannot look and concentrate on two things at the same time. If you that's where direction will go. If you look at the promotion you are going to have, of my skill, how do I learn? that I can be at the peak in fulfillment of my dream. The face of um, Potiphar's wife will be dim. You will not make much of that. Her voice will be strange. You say, I see a woman talking like this. Her appearance will be unattractive. Why is she like that? And why is she, you know, projecting this and that? Your temptation catches you when you look at the object of temptation and you appreciate the object of temptation and your mind goes away from the peak, from where you are going. And then you are not able to get to where you are going. You'll get there. Amen. I will get there. When you wake up in the morning, what, you, what do you look at? Your goal or all those things, pornography on the social media, what do you look at? When you go through life and you are walking, what do you look at? What does your mind, your heart concentrate on? If you are concentrating on what you see there, what you see there, what you hear there, your life will come to the level of what you are looking at. Your life will come to the low level of what you concentrate on but if you're looking up if you're looking at the goal if you're looking at the ideal if you're looking at the fulfillment of your dream that is where your heart will be going to i want you to picture it this way let's say you peak 
the fulfillment of the dream is uh, like a big magnet. And then you have a little magnet inside you here that is turned in the direction of the big magnet. That's where your steps will be going every time. Your mind will not go to what Potiphar's wife is seeing. She doesn't understand. What does she know about dream? What does she know about ministry? What does she know about the peak and about the position where Joseph was going? That's what gave him the purity. He said, a man like us, having destiny. A man like us, having the peak in mind. We don't look at those things. We don't get involved with those things. And he had a purpose-driven purity. Purity in private, as he was in the public. He said, what the public will not catch me doing, the private will not catch me doing. He said, the way I will behave, he was already thinking, when I become the prime minister of this land, when my dream is fulfilled and I walk with majesty, and I walk with dignity, and I walk with a man of position. This is the way I will walk. He was already thinking that in his mind. A person is always thinking like that. When I become what I'm called to become, when I become what I'm ordained to become, this is the way I will act, and this is the way I will look. And he says, I will be pure in private as I am in the public. That's why he had that purpose in mind, a purpose driven purity. I come to number three here. Number three here is the perseverance determining the peak performance. Anything we do in life, when you start doing it, it looks awkward. The first time you try to ride a bicycle, awkward. It's like, how would you do this? It's like, how are they doing it? And then you did it again, riding the bicycle. You did it again until because of the perseverance. And that perseverance made you to master the difficulties and the uh, challenges of riding, riding uh, the bicycle. Now you can ride without much effort. The same thing uh, when we started walking. Look at that baby. She stood up. And then she went down again, and then she tried to take steps as toddlers, and then she fell. She tried to, uh, to take an object before him, and then she fell. What if she stopped at that time? What if the mother said, baby, don't try that again? When you try to walk, you fall. And because of that falling, you could have bruises, very dangerous. No, they don't stop them. We don't stop them. You don't stop. You keep on. It's the perseverance that leads you and makes you to be the man, the woman you try to be. Studying English language, difficult. Mathematics, difficult. Studying any subject, difficult. But it's perseverance that keeps you going and going, and eventually you make it. The same thing, anything in life, you're learning to be a peak performer. You're learning to do anything, learning you have to persevere, and then you'll come to where you ought to get to in Jesus' name. I will. I said I will. You will get there in Jesus' name. You know the man, he did not mind. He was in the prison. He didn't say, is this the outcome of my dream? He knew that prison was not the final destination. It's just one of the stepping stones to get you to the palace. The next time I see you, I'll see you not in that prison. I'll see you in the palace. 
And it takes perseverance, doing it and doing it and doing it again until you get to that place of peak performance. I will get there. I will get there. Confirmed in heaven for you in Jesus' name. I come to number two now. Number two. The number one was Joseph. Number two is Jeremiah. The pursuit of a peak seeking learner. The pursuit of a peak seeking learner. You see that word seeking is not that he sought and he stopped. He's always seeking. You get to level one, you keep on seeking, that will get you to level two. You get to level two, you're still seeking, you're not satisfied. You're not saying, after primary school, I've got enough. I've learned enough. You keep on seeking. After secondary school, you don't say, I've got enough. I stop. You keep on seeking. It's a continuous thing. And the moment you start, and you start in the right direction, and now you're seeking and seeking and seeking to the peak, learning. You'll get there. I will get there. If nobody in my surrounding family has ever got there, I will get there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. It says, Before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I set thee apart. And I ordained, I put you in place, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before he was born, God knew Jeremiah. And now, it's not the only one he knew. Before I was born, he knew me. Say that for yourself. As I was coming out on that day of birth, the Lord was watching me. And he says, that man, that woman, although still a baby, but a man, a baby, but still a woman. This is where I created him to be. And that place God had in mind since you were born, before you were born. And so, as we keep on moving in perseverance, by the grace of God, as you pursue, you will get there. I said you will get there. Now. There's no debate here. In my natural ability, can I use that to get there? Yes. Do I remain only with my natural ability? No. It's ability plus the acquired learning. That gets you eventually there. God knew Joseph. God knew Jeremiah. God knew Joshua. God knew Jabez. God knew all those people. And he created natural talent for them. That will lead them where they will be. But they did not remain in that natural talent skill. They acquired the skill. So that as you arch that and you are learning. Then you will be there. I will be there. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, readiness and willingness to learn. Readiness and willingness to learn. Number two, reading and writing in order to lead. 
a person born and God intends to be a doctor and lead in the medical profession, he must read and write in order to lead. A person that is born and God intends that he'll be a prime minister, a leader of nations, he must read and write. Anyone that God has raised up to be this or that must read and write. Reading and writing in order to lead. Readers become leaders and leaders continue to read. Number three, remain in the way of life and in the way for life. That is, you remain in the way, in the way that will lead you to where God has ordained for you. You remain in that way in for life. Number one is readiness and willingness to learn. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 16. In Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 16, and it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn. If they will diligently learn in the, in the way of the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be, be built in the midst of my people. If they will learn, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. There is this readiness to learn, the readiness to learn. And if we don't have that readiness, we don't amount to much. We learn. And we'll start, we'll start learning uh, the subjects. Learn. Learn the subjects. Because uh, what's this going to do for me? All this I'm learning. It's going to project you and it's going to take you to the place where God has ordained for you. You learn uh, the subjects. You learn uh, also about yourself. Who am I? What can I do? What will I do? What am I caught out for? What am I supposed to do? We need to learn that. What do I find easy doing? What do I find difficult doing? What's my natural habitat? What do I do? And it's like a second nature unto me. You learn the subject. You learn about yourself. You learn the skill. After we've learned the subject, there are some practical things. The skills we need to learn. You know, it's the day of the computer. It's the day of the internet. If I don't learn, you know, those of us who went to school 50 years ago, we didn't need a computer to check our results. They posted it to us. And we didn't need, uh, you know, any kind of uh, online learning. Uh, where they just uh, take the chalkboard and wrote everything. We don't learn like that today. We must learn the computer. We must learn all those things. We can access our results and everything. We learn the subjects. We learn also the skill. And as we learn the skill, then we're going the right direction. What are the things you need to learn in your life? Check up and find out. I need to learn this. I need to learn this. I need to learn that. And at the same time, we're giving to the things we learned that made us to know the basic things. Now, we give the same time. We give the same intelligence. And we give the same diligence that we learn today. And as we're willing now, and you are ready to learn, the Lord will promote you. 
<laughs> he does not promote an ignorant man who knows nothing about the society, who knows nothing about administration, who knows nothing about what you do, and then bring him to the top to lead a nation. You must learn. Look at Proverbs chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9, give instruction to a wise man. A wise man, he has learned the basics, but he has not stopped learning. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Number three here, uh, number two rather, number two is reading and writing in order to lead. Reading and writing in order to lead. Now, why do I read? Well, when you are, when you are young, you are reading because there is an exam for you to pass. You're ready to relay. You're ready to recite. You're ready to give them back what you have learned. And as you go on in life, we we'll learn to retain. You learn, you read, we're reading so that we retain what we have read. If you read and you read in such a way that you don't retain what you read, it amounts to nothing. It's like you have not read because when you get to the exam, you cannot relate, you cannot reproduce, you cannot give what you have read. We read to retain. We read to reproduce. To reproduce what you have read. To put it on paper again. To write it from memory. We learn so that we can reproduce. We learn so that we can reactivate. Reactivate. There is that thing within us that will lie dormant that will lie dead if we don't read. But when you read, you wake up that sleeping giant and that sleeping professor that is on the inside of you to reactivate what you have. And we read so that we can research. The author, the writer of this topic, of this subject, I got to this level. I read him. I don't stop with him. I read to research and go beyond him. That is how knowledge increases. But then I read to realize everything I've read. To bring practical performance to what I have read. And we read so that we can bring reactivation and revisit everything that we have learned and we will not remain in the same situation all the days of our lives again amen, amen. read and write in order to lead number three remain in the way of life for life. Remain in the way. If I learn that this is injurious, that learning must be retained and I must remain in that way for life. The good things we learn that make us sound healthy, progressive, spiritual that makes us to be on top of the world all those good things we've learned will keep on in them what you hear here what you have heard before you remain in the way of life for life all through your life and then at the end you'll have the joy that you are a learner a leading learner 
a promoted learner, a progressing learner. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, it says that Lord stands in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? Where is the good way? And walk therein. Remain in that way for life. Amen. Amen. In the way of goodness, I remain. In the way of progress, I remain. In the way of possibilities, I remain in Jesus' name. Will you remain? I said, will you remain? Remain in the way for life. We come to number three now. Number one, I spoke about Joseph. Number two, I spoke about Jeremiah. Number three, I'm speaking about Jesus. Partnership with our promise-keeping Lord. Promise. He keeps his promise. When he says he will save, he keeps to that promise. When he says he'll sanctify, he'll purify, he'll purge us, he'll make us holy, he keeps to that promise. When he says he will empower us, we shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, and the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We do a lot by the resident spirit of God in our hearts. And when he gives us the promise, it's a faithful God. It's a faithful partner. It's a faithful promise keeper. He'll fulfill the promise in your life. Look at Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 49. It says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That power from on high will descend upon your life. And then he tells us in, verse, in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, reading from verse 33, Acts, chapter 2, verse 33, it says, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared forth this which he now see and hear. And then he tells us in verse 39, it says, for the promise is unto you. The promise this day is unto you. The promise of pardon is for you. Of purity is for you. Of power is for you. Of ability is for you. Of anointing is for you. And the promise of achievement is for everyone in Jesus' name. It says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We come in partnership with the Lord. And as we come in partnership with him, everything he knows will do good in our lives. He will give unto us. Everything he knows will do good in your life. He will give unto you. Amen. Three things we're looking at. Number one, lean on the Lord for pardon, for purity, for power. Number two, live for the Lord prayerfully, purposefully, passionately. Number three, love the Lord like peace settlers, peak seekers, peace setters. Number one, he wants us to lean on the Lord for pardon, for purity, and 
for power. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He said, we shall seek the Lord. It's a command. And then we come as obedient children. We say here, Lord, I come. I'm seeking the face of the Lord. He said, call ye upon him while he is near. He is very near now and he wants to pardon he wants to purify he wants to empower and he says we should call upon him while he's near verse 7 in verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord for he will have mercy upon him mercy is waiting for you and then to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you. Say, he will pardon me. He will purify you. Say, he will purify me. He will empower you. Say, he will empower me. And when you have the peace of mind and the purity in your soul and the power in your spirit, you are ready to go. You are going to achieve everything the Lord has promised and provided in Jesus' name. Number two is to live for the Lord prayerfully, purposefully, passionately. When, when, as you go out now and as you live the rest of your life, you know that you are not an ex, you are not an ordinary person. You are a purpose-driven man. You are a passionate man or woman. You are a prayerful man or woman. You depend upon the Lord. And all through life, every difficulty, every challenge of life, the Lord will assist you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will build you up. And he'll tell you, you are not ordinary. You belong to me. And so you live a prayerful life, a purposeful life, a passionate life. It tells us in uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 14. In Titus chapter 2, Reading from verse 14, it says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. Are you there? Zealous of good works. Are you still there? Anything you do, you come with passion. Anything you do, everything you do, you, you don't do anything sluggishly. And you don't do anything dragging yourself. You don't do anything as if there's no breath inside you. You don't do anything as if, what did they call this person to come and do something? She's about collapsing. You don't do anything like that. That way, he purifies you. And all the deficiency that will weaken you and make you like you don't have any nerve, you don't have any energy, you don't have any, any excitement, he clears that up of your life and when you when you come to class you come like i'm excited to learn and when you come to church you come like i'm excited to worship and when you come to your place of work you come like i'm excited to work and i'm going to do here good here today you come everywhere you go as the lord touches your life and touches your personality you do everything number one prayerfully number two you do purposefully fully and number three you do passionately passion will be in your life zeal will be in your life uh, you know there were people who are building a cathedral and then uh, they, they asked the first one, why are you doing this? So he said, I'm doing this. I'm a bricklayer. I'm doing this. I'm laying brick. 
They asked the second one, and they said, Why are you doing this? The same work, the same work. Why are you doing this? He said, I have a family. I'm a responsible father, and I'm doing this to earn a living and feed the beautiful wife and feed those handsome children at home. That one was more excited than the first one. The first one said, I'm doing this because what else can I do to get? a job, I didn't get anything and so I'm doing this I'm laying brick, but the second one said, I'm doing this on purpose, I need to feed my wife I need to feed my family, and I'm so happy, I got this to do, they came to the third one, brick layer, laying the same brick, walking the same thing uh, that all that were walking on, and they said, why are you doing this? Oh, he said, I'm building a place of worship for the most high God God. And I cannot think of any other thing to do but to make people come and worship God. That's why I'm doing this and it's the most exciting thing I could do in my life. Anybody can work. Anybody can do anything. They are those who work and they do what they do. They have no reason for what they're doing. There's no passion. There's no zeal. There's no excitement. But from today, you you will have passion. You will have purpose. And then you do everything prayerfully. Lord, this that I have to do, I bring all my heart, all my intelligence, all my life into what I'm doing. I'm so excited about what God has called me to do. That's what God is looking at, that you live for the Lord prayerfully, purposefully, and passionately. Number three now. Number three, love the Lord like peace settlers. Anywhere there's confusion, anywhere there is conflict, you come there, you love the Lord, and you are peace settlers, peaceful settlers. Number two, you come like Peak seekers. You want to take the ordinary thing you find there. When you begin there, when you start there, you come in here, you look at everything you have to do, you have to supervise, you have to organize, and you take that thing from the ordinary to the extraordinary. I can't hear your amen. amen. You're teaching in a school, and you see the attitude of all the teachers, how they teach, how they do their work. There's no connection between them and the students. They even hate those students. They hate the subject. They hate the class. And when they come to teach, they teach history as if history is a relic of the past. That why are we even reading all this? But when you get there, and you see there's no life, there's no light, there's no passion, and there is, there is no peace in that community. You come there and you bring peace in that community. You bring power in that community. And the things you do there, you lift up the standard of what is being done there. You're a peak seeker. And then you have now changed from the ordinary to the extraordinary. I have changed. I have changed. From the ordinary to the extraordinary. Extraordinary pace setter. You come and you know now anywhere I go, I will set the pace. Anywhere I, I go, no matter the success that had been there before I came, no matter the level of achievement that had been there before I came, I will lift up the standard I meet there and I will go in front and say, come on, let's go because now I and the people the Lord has given me, we are extraordinary peace setters. Amen? Amen. Yes. Can it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Yes. Through you? Yes. No discouragement? Yes. No looking back? No tiredness, 
you have the power of the Almighty supporting you, sustaining you, and going to be with you all through your journey here on earth. Every day will add to your success. Every week will add to your success. And every moment will add to your achievement in Jesus' name. Power. Passion, Amen. purpose, Amen. perseverance, Amen. enduring to the end, Amen. never tired, Amen. always going forward, Amen. looking up, Amen. having all the power it takes to take you further, the Lord fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up with that amen, carry that amen, and voice that amen to the Almighty so that it can make you an extraordinary peace setter. Don't think about your age. Don't think about what you've been before, what you have not been before. Open your mouth and tell the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. And you see, you feel the guilt, you feel the condemnation, you feel, I've not been doing well. I've not been living right. I've not been going the right direction. Tell the Lord there and say, Lord, I seek you now for pardon. I seek you for forgiveness. I seek you for a life transforming salvation. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. It will save you. It will forgive you. And all the problems in your life. Look at those problems with a new eyeglasses, a new sight. And that pressure, take pleasure in that. That rejection, don't allow that to depress you, keep you down. That Rejection become relevant. You're not allow the rejection, the problem to make you irrelevant, to rubbish your life. But that rejection will bring out something out of you after God has forgiven you your sin and given you forgiveness and salvation you say lord i'm now on the path of relevance opposition that will not stop you let the lord give you the salvation the good nature the righteousness the forgiveness that cuts the cord the cord that has tied you down that cuts everything. And now, you're able to move up without anything tying you down, pinning you down. Bleeding on the inside. Bleeding because of what you've suffered. Turn it to blessing. Blessing. Not crying because of bleeding. Not criticizing people because of bleeding, not critical, but your life now in the hands of the Lord becomes a blessing. A blessing to you, a blessing to people around. You go through life blessing people, rejoicing with people, touching lives in a positive way. Any lies told on you? Lie. Change it to a ladder. And through that lie, climb 
up the ladder. The ladder to leadership. Look, keep on looking at the faces of the liars, pointing at them, jerking them with your fingers. You told a lie against me, get up that train and understand that can be a ladder that leads you to the place you will lead. They try to eliminate you. Turn that elimination to elevation. Make progress. Mistreatment. Why did they treat me like that? Forget about that. That's how the world is. The wind will blow the wrong direction. Leave that alone. And turn that mistreatment, misrepresentation, turn it to mastery. And make the main thing the main thing in your life. Think about the main thing. Stand on that main thing. And the S, the stumbling block, look at that. There's a place you can put your leg on, on that stumbling block, and make it a stepping stone. Come into the plan of God for your life. And say, Lord, here am I. I know you knew me before I was born. And what you have ordained, I will be. I want to be. I'm ready and willing to learn. I'll read and write to lead. Let the Lord do that in your life. And go out of this place as you remain in the way, in the way of life and in the way for life. Remain in the way. Don't branch off. Come in partnership with Christ, the Savior. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will transform your life. He will change all that needs changing in your life. Lean on Him. He saves he sanctifies, he purifies, he makes holy. In a profession where can be holy, in a place of work where can be holy, in our endeavors where can be holy, in our plans where can be holy as we make progress where can be holy. He saves, he sanctifies. It's trying this. It'll give us the power that puts us over. Now you become peace settlers. You settle on peace. Peace peak seekers. You're not a mediocre anymore. In partnership with the Lord, you become a peak seeker in partnership with him your life takes on new virtue new power new and you become a peace setter Amen. In your life, amen.
in your behavior amen. amen in your progress through life amen, amen. in the passion and the zeal excitement of life amen, amen. in the progress you make as you follow on in partnership with the Lord in progress every day every time all through life amen, amen. every challenge every difficulty you come across the Lord will pull you through amen. will take you through amen. will make you an achiever Nothing, no stumbling block, no opposition, no pressure, no rejection, no bleeding, and no blemish, and nothing of their process of elimination. They said, uh-uh, it's not coming from the good tribe. It's not coming from a place. Take his name off. Nobody from today will be able to take your name off. Elimination will turn to elevation. And all the mistreatment will not enter your body. Will not enter your soul. Mistreatment will not enter your spirit. And every stumbling block you will climb over. Amen. Where are you there? Raise up your hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everything, your purpose for life for everyone here. To the youngest, to the oldest, everyone here, to the members, to the ministers, Lord, we pray that progress and that peak you have for every one of us, take everyone there in Jesus' name salvation for everyone who has repented and sanctification for those who have consecrated everything they have on the altar of the Lord and strength and power for everyone, the power of the Holy Ghost to energize and power us and make us the people we ought to be, grant to everyone in Jesus name on this path of life, in the way of life, we we'll pray for life throughout our lives. We'll not look back. Amen. We'll not fall by the wayside. Amen. We'll not be discouraged. And we will not do anything to jeopardize the great progress you have for every one of us. I pray, Lord, you take everyone from the level where they are now and take them to the next level. The next level. The next level. Next level of life. Next level of love. Next level of learning. Next level of achievement. Do it in every life in Jesus' name. And I pray when we meet again, because we shall meet again. We'll hear your story of upliftment, your story of lifting up, your story of progress, your story of a passionate life, and your story of an achieving life in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, everything we need on our journey, on the way to have the extraordinary peace setting mindset grant unto everyone that what you have done will be indelible, unforgettable, and will keep on moving with the Lord until we reach that point you have called us to. Whatever your power can do, do in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord make the amen permanent in your life. In Jesus' name.